T-Birds fans, another installment of Thunderbird Thursdays presented by Mass Mutual. We have a player on the show for the first time this summer, Ryan Smith here, and joined by newcomer to the Springfield Thunderbirds, along with the rest of the St. Louis Blues organization, and a familiar face and name for those of you in the Springfield market, Nolan Stevens joins me here this evening. Nolan, thanks so much for taking some time out. Thanks for having me. First of all, and I know you're going to get this a ton once you arrive in Springfield, and it goes without saying, the resemblances there are people watching this probably are aware of who your dad is. Your dad, John Stevens, played in the American League and the National League for a long time before going on to have a very successful coaching career, reaching a Stanley Cup final this past year as an assistant coach in Dallas. But for you, being just for him just being dad to you, I'm always curious to ask this, particularly of players who have fathers with coaching and playing ties to the league. How quickly did you fall in love with the game? And I'm kind of curious what some of your earliest memories with your dad are around this sport. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I was just ever since I was a baby, we were around the rink and going to games. And so I can't even remember where I, when I fell in love with the game. But, uh, you know, my earliest memories when he was coaching the Phantoms, just going to the rink there and, you know, he'd cut down, uh, you know, player sticks for us to use. And me and my brother would just be running around the hallways and, you know, we spent a lot of time on at the rink from an early age. So, uh, you know, we were, we were always around it and we've always loved it. So it's been it's been a family thing for sure. What do you think was the biggest lesson that your dad ever imparted on you in terms of being a hockey player and being a professional? Uh, I think the biggest thing he always talked about is just, you know, your work ethic and your attitude. And uh, he obviously, you know, we watch a lot of hockey together and breaks down a lot of things. But when, you know, growing up, that was the biggest thing for him was just, you know, giving our best effort and, uh, you know, working hard in the offseason, trying to get better. So that's what he taught us the most, I'd say. We have one question that came in from a fan of ours, Samantha Robinson, and it's an interesting one. And I'm not sure if you go around and ask sons of NHL players. I know that there's sort of this expectation that fans sometimes set forth. Do you feel any kind of inherent pressure for you and for your brother to live up to your dad's accolades, your dad's standards, or whatever that case may be? Uh, I mean, no, there's not really any pressure on me or my brother, especially playing hockey. Like, uh, it was always a choice for us whether we wanted to play, and he, he would always ask if we, if we is something we really wanted to do. But, uh, you know, the thing we do definitely try to live up to is uh, his work ethic because, you know, he always sets a great example for us, you know, how hard he works. You know, when he was a player, he was in great shape, and now and he, he spends a lot of time, you know, studying the game and trying to get better, be a better coach. So we just try to, you know, match his work, work ethic and, you know, make him proud that way. Now, correct me if I'm wrong here. I'm trying to do the math backwards in my head with, uh, with your age and whatnot. I'm guessing when your father got the job, his first NHL head coaching job in Philadelphia, I guess that would have been around the time you would have been 10, 11 years old. Who, if any of the, if you were around the room a lot, were there any players that you can distinctly remember as being someone that you really looked up to other than your dad in terms of how they played, how they conducted themselves? Uh, that was kind of a cool year because uh, the year before he coached the, the Phantoms in the lockout year. So we kind of got to see a lot of those young guys make that step the next year to the Flyers. So he had guys like, uh, Mike Richards and Jeff Carter on his team that we got to see as young guys win a Caller Cup and then go to the Flyers. So those are always two of our favorites, especially, uh, you know, Mike Richards when he was younger. He was he was a beast. So we loved watching him and, you know, definitely trying to model our game after him. Now, you were not you were not born yet for much of your dad's playing days in Springfield. But when you learned that St. Louis would be changing their AHL affiliation and going to Springfield, did you have a, ch did you have a chance at all to see from your dad what playing in Springfield was like, what playing in the New England area again, like you did in college would be like? Uh, not too much yet. I mean, he's definitely told a lot of stories about playing there over the years. Uh, you know, they spent a lot of time there. My brother, uh, you know, he was a baby. There's a lot of videos of him running around that rink. And, you know, he, he, he told me a little bit about the rink. I know it's an old, older rink and, you know, some good atmosphere there. But, uh, you know, I'm sure as the season comes closer, he'll tell me about the towns and stuff like that. But uh, we haven't had too much chance to talk, uh, get into depth about Springfield. But I'm, I'm sure we will as time goes on. How exciting is it for you to – this change of affiliation, sometimes it can be a challenge for players going from – 
San Antonio, Texas, and now shipping up to the Northeast to Springfield. But for you growing up in the Northeast for the most part in your life, how much of a perk is it to be back closer to home again? No, it's great. You know, uh, you know, San Antonio was an awesome spot. You know, the fans are great and the, the weather was awesome. But, uh, you know, I'm definitely uh, – there's there's a lot of excitement to be able to move back east and play kind of closer to home. And, you know, I, Boston's not too far away. I spent four years there. And, you know, I'm familiar with that, uh, the New England area a lot. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty exciting to kind of go back east and be closer to home for sure. Another one of our fans, Eric Darris, asked, asked a question to us that I frankly was already going to ask you, so I'll give him the credit for coming up with this one. And it's, again, regarding a change in location for the AHL team's games. What are you looking forward to most about Springfield? Will it be the fact that you'll have more nights to sleep in your own bed, more practice time, more individual skills work because you're in a much more – friendly geographic location just how much easier for a player is it to not have to hop on a plane every other weekend yeah no that's a good point I think uh being able to play you know and be sleep in your own bed that same night uh lets your schedule kind of have a little more uh consistency and you know I'm excited to not have to you know spend entire days in the airport you know those travel days out west kind of get long sometimes so um you know, guys also complain about the bus, but uh, I, I got a good feeling I'll like that a little bit more than the uh, the connecting flights and the early wake-ups for that. So I'm excited definitely to have, like, a consistent schedule this year and, uh, you know, a little bit, I think, going to be a little bit easier travel. So I think a lot of guys are excited about that. We're talking with Thunderbirds forward Nolan Stevens on Thunderbird Thursdays presented by Mass Mutual. Nolan, I want to transition now into – you as a player and enough of the talk about the geographics and enough about your dad and all that. We got all that out of the way and off the table, but now moving forward to you on a personal level and a playing level, your coach and your general manager, when we spoke to each of them, they both praised your versatility, but in your own eyes, how would you describe your game, your style of play? And the question I always like to ask of newcomers is when things are going well, what is working in Nolan Stevens game? Um, you know, yeah, for me, uh, you know, last year I, I played wing and center and, you know, left wing, right, right wing center. So, you know, I like to, I like to be a guy that can play all positions and, you know, be really responsible with the puck and in my own end and kind of be used in different areas. But, uh, you know, when I'm playing well, I definitely have the puck a lot below the dots and trying to play the power game and taking pucks to the net and just, you know, doing little things right to, you may not notice a lot of times, but, you know, I think for me, the details in the game is what I got to focus on. And, you know, I get success through that. What has been over the course of the long, long quarantine and post pause period, we, we all are encountering our own challenges in different ways. We talked to Drew about that and to Kevin about that, but for you as a player, what's been the biggest challenge in not being able to play in any game situation for eight months and all you can do is, skate and practice but you can't mimic a game situation what's what's the biggest hurdle with that yeah it's it's definitely you know the days kind of get long sometimes when you're you're waiting for the season to start but you know you try to I feel like this huge time off you do your best to take some positives out of it I mean I don't think we're ever gonna have a time again to have this such a big block of time to be able to pick a couple things of your game and work on and you know hopefully through this time off you can come out a little bit better player. I know that we're not practicing and playing games, but, you know, we're getting on the ice and um, doing a lot of individual skill work. And, you know, I've just been trying to pick a few things that I think will help, help me this season and really trying to get, get better at them. And, you know, it's, it's getting long. It's sometimes it's tough to do the same thing all the time. You try to mix things in there to your training and keep it fresh. But, uh, you know, just staying motivated and, you know, keep uh, staying with the process. I feel like it'll be good. And, you know, in the long run, it'll be good for a lot of guys. How exciting will it be whenever, whenever the time comes for the first game for this new affiliation in a packed mass mutual center? I know you haven't, the only chance you've had to maybe see what it's like is via social media and via past highlights. How exciting is it going to be whenever, whenever it is that we're all back out at the rink again and things are, normal again yeah I mean you know that's what we're all looking forward to I think uh the moment we can finally play in front of fans and you know play the game is gonna 
you know, it's going to feel awesome. You know, there's not, there hasn't been a lot of normalcy to this whole thing, but I think at the end of the day, that's where we're all looking forward to the most. And, you know, going to a new rink with new fans, uh, it's going to be really exciting to feel that atmosphere. And I know it's an old rink, so it's, it's definitely going to be loud and definitely looking forward to that. And we can't wait for the day that that does arrive for all of us. He's chatting with Nolan Stevens with the Springfield Thunderbirds here this afternoon. Nolan, thanks so much for taking the time to join us. Yep. Thanks for having me.